But we got to get right to it, my friends. The Liberty, they clinched their first title in franchise history. It was an all-time series, so we're going to waste no time, Director Jill, in getting right to the highlights. Nafisa Collier and the Lynx taking on Brianna Stewart, Sabrina Unescu, and the Liberty. Momo, Sabrina struggled out the gate. So did Sabrina, but John Paul Jones was all over it for the Liberty. When they needed a bucket, they went to John Paul Jones. They had no answer for her inside, and I think that was the difference in this game. Uh-oh, UNESCO starting to find her rhythm a little bit there. Feeding inside, Stewie cuts to the basket, gets that one to go. The Liberty still up four. Under two minutes left here, the Lynx down by two. Collier driving here, Brian, gets the layup to go. She was so spectacular in this entire series. She deserved more. Collier once again driving, getting the layup. Now the Lynx up 60 to 58. Final seconds of this one here. Now watch here. Stewart gets fouled by Collier and gets sent to the line. She misses the first one. She misses. She does the not miss one. shots like that, Malika. She she's an 85% shooter from the free throw line. Well, and Sabrina doesn't tend to miss shots like that. Here's Liberty coach Sandy Brundello, who had a strategy though coming out of this timeout. Embellish it because that is a foul. So 6.3 to play, the Liberty down two. Inbounding here, Stewart gets the ball but is fouled on the shot. She may have traveled here. Hey. <laughs> may have taken a first-class cross-country flight this before the, the this foul. This is what they should be complaining about, not the foul, the travel. Well, a little contact there. Stewart will go to the line, but after what happened last time, the entire arena, right, holding their breath. Spike Lee sitting on the ground. Stewart. Gets up the first, gets it to oh. go. Gets the second to go, so it's a tie game. 5.2 seconds left to play. The Lynx inbounding here. Kayla McBride. Pretty good look. Misses the three. So to overtime we go. All right, Momo, let's pick it up. The first possession of overtime, Liberty Ball. Remember, we talked about UNESCO struggling a little bit. So look, she hits Phoebus here for the open triple. That was one of eight assists that Sabrina had on the night. You can't make shots. At least you can rebound and get assists. And then Savali gets a steal on a bad pass here. Takes it all the way to the other end for a layup. The Liberty up by five. So now under 20 seconds to play. The Lynx down by three. Bridget Carlton takes the three. She misses the Liberty grab the rebound. And then Collier fouls to stop the clock. Fouls out on that one. Spike Lee waves her away. And then 10 seconds on the clock. Lynx, last chance here. The Liberty steal the pass, and the celebration begins. Just emotions pouring out here. Teresa Witherspoon in the building. Spike Lee loving every second. Let's take a listen to Brianna Stewart. I've been, like, manifesting this moment uh, for a while, and there's, there's no feeling like it. You know, this game, and, and credit to Minnesota because they, they gave us a tough series. But to be able to bring a championship to New York, first ever in franchise history, uh, it's an incredible feeling. And I can't, I literally can't wait to continue to celebrate with the city. When I hugged Stewie, I literally was just sobbing in her air. Like, I didn't say not one word. I was just crying the whole time. I'm just so happy. We talked about it so much of, like, of coming together and, and what we envisioned and what we wanted to do in New York and what we could do. And to be able to to pull it off and accomplish a dream, it's, it just means a lot to have everything come together and, and to be able to win together. You look back and me, JJ Sloot, we all came here to, to win a championship and you know, last year we lost in the finals, but look, we're here. Look at us we're now. We're here. Look at us now, baby. Can't wait to celebrate. Listen, I don't know, see me at the parade. Right, right, right. With 17 points and six boards, John Quill Jones was your finals MVP, and she was really a steadying force for the Liberty in the series with Brianna Stewart. Sabrina yep. Unescu couldn't get their shots to fall. Her career path has seen a steady rise, and this is cool. She became the first player in league history to win finals MVP, league MVP, most improved player, and sixth player of the year in her career. And Shanae Gumake, you were in the building last night on a night where the Liberty's two biggest stars really struggled to get their shots to fall. I've said it a couple of times at this point. That's how jarring it was. Usually that's not a recipe for success. So how exactly did they get it done here? 
Look, you saw her, John Quell Jones. She's six six, very statuesque. She was Lady Liberty Game Five because she <laughs> helped liberate this squad from a 28-year championship drought. Now the numbers they do not lie. Sabrina one for 19. Brianna Stewart four for 15. They did not <laughs> really have a good shooting night at all. But John Quell was missed consistency, 18 points per game. And as you mentioned, that resume, I have seen John Quell Jones blossom. When you look at those six women of the year, most improved player, that was my teammate. But now MVP, finals MVP and champion, that is truly impressive. But you also have to shout out Niara Sabali because without her third quarter energy, mm. the push she made off of the bench, that was truly the separating factor so that New York can call themselves champions. It's been 51 years in the city for hoops. <laughs> right. And finally, the Liberty got it done. And by the way, I love that the women are the ones to bring a championship to New York City after 51 years. And you know the rule, Janae, on this show, we always talk about the winners first. Yes. However, the losing side of all of this, there was a late foul call that was a major topic of discussion. Take a listen. That was not a foul. That call should have been reversed on that challenge. If we sent that clip in, they would have told us that it was marginal contact, no foul. Guaranteed. These guys shot 30%. Shot 30%. You know, the, the difference was in the foul line. All the headlines uh, will be Reeve cries foul. Uh, bring it on, right? Bring it on. Because it's stolen from us. Bring it on. And congratulations to the Liberty on their first championship. Been around, I don't know, how long has the league been around? 28 years? It took them 28 years. Congrats to them. You know, we were, we were that close to our fifth. Just didn't happen. Cheryl oh. said that uh, she had time today. <laughs> the entire basketball world was paying attention to this, Janae. LeBron James paying attention, saying, I'm sorry, but that wasn't a foul. Let the damn players dictate the outcome of a closely battled, contested game. Damian Lillard chimed in, saying refs called this game like they knew the assignment in the second half, boy. Great game. <laughs> a lot of folks, they voiced their opinions on that last call. And I'm going to be really honest, Shanae, you never want to be asking the question the day after an important game, let alone a championship. But here we go. Did the officials get this right? They did not, in my opinion. Okay. And upon multiple replays, to me, it looked, and I give credit to them because they had all the angles, but to me, it looked like it was marginal contact. That, to me, was, I mean, right there, that was probably a travel. And then on top of it, right here, I mean, Alana Smith was there. I, like, you could see angles. Nafisa Collier even posted to her social media where it didn't seem like there was much, if any, contact at all. But to me, it's not just this call that she's mad at. It's the entire officiating. Look at the free throw discrepancy. See Malika, 25 free throws to eight. Nafisa Collier, she shot the ball 23 times and had this many free throws. Mm. How does that happen? The only credit I give to is the fact that the New York Liberty had the number one overall seed. And so with number one overall comes home court. With home court comes a little bit of leniency sometimes with the energy in Barclays being truly electric. But I, I totally believe Coach Reeve has a reason to be mad about the officiating. But at the end of the day, the game came down to more of Niara Sobley showing up, yeah. Kayla Thornton's defense, and the fact that Nafisa Collier and Kayla McBride combined for, I think, 40 or so points. No one else other than that had more than six. That's what dictated the loss for the Lynx. Yeah, you're, you're a Stanford Hall of Famer, Janae. Nothing that you just said was at all incorrect. But when I'm listening to what Cheryl Reeves is saying, and by the way, the, the addition of, well, congratulations on winning your first championship. We funny. got our fifth <laughs> stolen from us, essentially. What I'm looking at is 44 points through three quarters and the wide open shot that were missed. Was this the reason that the Lynx lost last night? It wasn't, and I know that's hard to hear because right. sometimes it feels like you're playing against the other team and the refs, but as I mentioned, I mean, it was a tough night for Courtney Williams, who had been sensational in the WNBA Finals. Again, K-Mac and Nafisa combined for, I believe, 43 points. Other than that, no one else had more than six. The difference is they got bench production in the New York Liberty, and they also had a separator in John Quell Jones, who has been there, done that, tried and tested, MVP that showed up. So having that ability of uh, talent on the Liberty side really uh, allowed them to have the edge on a night where officiating was a key factor. Yeah, the gripe is warranted, but at the end of the day, you want to leave no doubt. You don't want to leave it in the referee's hands.
fans to be able to decide a championship. And that little bit of doubt is where you say, okay, this is where, I'm sorry, but that's how it went down. All right, one more thing, though, before we move on. Sinead, did you see this, this post of Sabrina Unescu? She was cramping up while posing for a photo with the trophy. I, I think that 40 minutes of basketball sometimes <laughs> will do that to you. Got to get some fluids. Got to get some stretching. Yeah, just, just working it out a little bit there. Oh, my goodness. That's an intense photo shoot or an intense game or a little bit of both. Thank goodness she's okay. She was able to get with her team, party a little bit, and make it to Good Morning America early, early this morning. Oh, there's Sandy coming in for a little bit of a help there. It took 28 years, but ESPN Bet thinks they might, oops, do it again. The Liberty, they're the favorites to repeat and win in the 2025 WNBA Finals. They are followed by the Lynx, the Aces in the Sun, and if Nafisa Collier's Instagram post is anything, I think they're coming back with a little bit of a vengeance this upcoming season. I do want to stick in the W, though, Chanae, because we do have some breaking news about the future of the league and its players now that the season has concluded. What can you tell us? Breaking news, the WMBPA Executive Committee and Board of Player Reps have voted that they are opting out mm. of the 2020 Collective Bargaining Agreement. So this means that the players and the league are now on the clock to negotiate a new CBA by the end of the 2025 season. And y'all, the timing of this decision is truly huge. Coming off of a historic WNBA season that includes record viewership, increases in attendance by 48%, increases in merchandise sales by 600% compared to last year. So this is a huge decision that was just with, was made, and now we wait and see how the league and the players are going to work together for the future of the WNBA. So what are the players going to be asking for here, Chanae? What could we be looking at? Yeah, the key issues are establishing a new economic model okay. that is truly more creative and ensures player wages better reflect the growing business. They also hope to build upon professional standards that are set by teams like New York, Seattle, Las Vegas, Phoenix, all whom have state-of-the-art practice facilities. And of course, they hope to expand lifelong benefits for players, including retirement and family planning. So see, you can see right here, these are some of the points of emphasis that the league and the players are going to have to address. So if those are the point of emphasis, I'm wondering, Chanae, how far are the players looking to take this? Is there any possibility that we could see a possible work stoppage here? To me, what I have been heard, what I've heard, and what I've uh, learned from the union is the fact that they are preparing to take as long as necessary to be able to have the best negotiation as possible. They have been leaning on their leading experts of their collective bargaining bargaining agreement and their advisory council to sort of make these determinations. But overall, we have seen over the course of this WNBA season that the players they have handled their business on the court, and now they look to handle their business literally off the court in this monumental time for the. So news here on NBA Today, the Players Association is opting out of the 2020 collective bargaining agreement.